Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage, and today we're going to be talking about the Acrobrat frame. I know usually I'm Mr. Cheapo, but I splurged a little bit. Want to check it out? Stick around. Alright guys, I am so happy my Acrobrat that I ordered finally came. I'm super excited to crack this open, take a look at it, and I figured I'd take you guys along on the journey. Now, if you don't know already, I'm kind of Mr. Budget Guy. I kind of like saving money, as we all do, but for me it's more of a... If I can get a comparable experience or performance but spend a little bit less, I kind of like to do that. But on the other hand, sometimes it's just nice to splurge a little bit, or sometimes even you may get some better quality. And that's kind of where I'm at with this here, is that I'm at that cusp where I'm, I'm definitely seeing that there is some advantage to be gained by buying expensive frames. But I wasn't really ready to drop all that cash because they can be, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, hundreds of dollars on expensive 5-inch frames. So I thought a good place to get my feet wet would be on a three inch frame. That way it doesn't seem as big of a pillow to swallow, if that makes any sense. So it's not as expensive. It's still an expensive frame for a three inch, but it's not expensive in the grand scheme of things compared to like a hundred dollar five inch frame. The other reason is because I kind of had a really bad crash with my XJB that kind of caused some, some issues. So... We're going to be reconstructing that in a separate video. So that's where this kind of all got inspired. So I went and I picked myself up an Acro Brat. So before we get into that, though, if you haven't already, slam that subscribe button. While you're at it, hit that bell icon. It makes finding my videos easier. It helps support the channel. And you'll be in the know the moment videos are posted. So you can come and check it out and get the latest and greatest. <sighs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We got the Acrobat frame. I'm gonna bring you all in close. We'll un unbag it, I guess not a box, but we'll unbag it together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna build it out necessarily like putting components and stuff into it, but I do wanna build it just to get an idea of how it is built. Like, you know, to create the frame, to see how I'd wanna lay stuff out into it, how much room there is as far as height goes, where you put the components. You know, you kind of get the idea. So why don't you come on, we'll get building. All right, so with our packaging we have here, it's actually nicely packaged. It's a little Ziploc bag. I thought that this was a sticker on the front, but that's actually part of the bag. It's printed directly on it. That's not a sticker, just stuck on a generic bag. Um, and then we have all our goodies inside. So let's dig in and see what we got. All right, so we'll just pour everything out here. Okay, bag's empty. Put that to the side. So a little piece of paper says, we need your help. The first batch of Acrobrats include an assortment of bushings to help find the one that works best for your setup. Help the community by sharing it your setup. So we'll have to play around with that, looks like. Put that to the side. And then we have all the little bushings here these look like the bigger ones for the camera assembly put those to the side we have the littler ones for the stack and then we have ooh, fancy fancy separated hardware pack although it's interesting there's two empty compartments here i don't know if that's intentional or not but that's pretty cool that there's little separated hardware for each individual thing that we will need. I'm liking that. Put that on to the bottom here. And then we have some Uma Grip. Okay. With the trademark logo going on there. So a little piece of that. And then the carbon itself with a little battery strap branded as well. So let's take that off. Oh, 
Well, that is intriguing, and here's why. This battery strap is actually attached. Is it like... Yeah, I think it's full-on attached. Let's see. Oh, no. It's not full-on attached. It's just some-on attached. Like, you can just... It's just threaded on. But I think you can... Oh, well, maybe. Oh, no, you would just go this way with it. Okay. So here's the deal. It's not attached to the carbon, so you can use or not use it. But the fact that it's integrated and already, you know, threaded on there, that is, you know, pretty cool. That's like a little luxury step that I don't have to necessarily do. But it's nice that they have like a little battery sling to uh, help support the battery that you put in this. So we'll put that to the side. And let's check out this carbon here. So I will say under first impressions, I mean, the carbon definitely compared to what I'm used to as far as like a budget type of carbon, this does feel like a much higher quality. Uh, the top just has a more satiny kind of feel to it. The edges are obviously not sharp whatsoever. I wouldn't say that they necessarily have a camphor, chamfer, beveled edge to them, but they're definitely not sharp. Although some edges are sharp. It depends on like this edge is sharp here, but this top edge is kind of smooth. So I guess it depends on where they use the certain cutting, I guess. I don't know. That's weird. Some some edges are sharp, some edges are rounded, but uh, it definitely feels a higher quality. And then the base plate here feels very chunky. Very chunky on the base plate. And it does feel like it has a, uh, a beveled edge all around. Not on the cutouts. The cutouts do feel very sharp, but that's fine. They're just cutouts. But the edges out here are all rounded and nice. I'm liking this. It's, it's definitely got a nice rigidity to it. Let me get my calipers and we'll get some uh, thickness measurements. All righty. So I got my caliper here. So let's see here. For our base plate, we're looking at about three uh, three millimeter thick. It feels thicker than three. I don't know why. It, I was going to guess four. I don't know why it just feels thicker. But is it zeroed? Yeah, close enough. Zero. Check somewhere else here just to see. No, it's three. All right, so a three millimeter base plate. And little side plates. We're at two millimeter thick. And just do a double check. Two millimeter thick. And we'll check the little battery sling plate. Two millimeter thick on that as well. So it looks like, aside from obviously, I have to install my bushings down here for the stack. And then I have to install my bushings onto these things to go on the sides here. The general gist of this. is it just builds out like that with some standoffs along the edge there which is pretty simple I like that what I also like which I, I knew it had but seeing it is really cool is that you actually have spots for three things because I do plan on doing like a, a run cam split mini in here so it's nice that you don't have to go so tall it's kind of like uh, you know, it's, it, essentially this is like an H style frame. So it lets me have my flight stack in the middle, but then I can put, you know, the run cam in the front and I can put, you know, like the receiver or whatever in the back. So that's kind of cool that it has provisions for almost like three little stacks. So it can be very, very, um, squatty. All right. So let's, uh, let's get going here. So I think for the inserts, I think I'm going to start with, I think the white ones are the softest ones and I'm going to work my way up, but let's do a little confirmation on that with a little squeeze -a Yeah, these feel very soft. That's pretty hard. 
That one's soft. Okay, so I would say my own personal assessment, white is the softest, then comes red, then comes blue, and then comes black. So softest, middle, middle, hardest. Yeah, so I'm gonna try starting with the softest and if I end up with issues like I have jello or something's just not right, I can always swap it out and move up to the next level until the problem goes away. That's sort of like one of the things you gotta do when you're when you're troubleshooting problems or whatever. You don't wanna change too much at once. You don't wanna change too, thing, too much too drastically. So I'm just gonna start at one end of the spectrum and work my way up from there. And then I'm gonna go, since I'm using white on the stack end, I'm gonna use the white ones for the camera mount section. And let's just double check my assessment here. Yeah, my assessment stands. It's white, red, blue, black, as far as heavy dutiness goes. All right, so let's get these uh, squished in. Let me try maybe like some dental floss or something to like loop it and pull it through. All right, I don't remember where I seen this before. I think it had something to do with scuba related things where I had to put in some rubber grommets onto some stuff. But you feed string or in this case, dental floss. I'm using dental floss just cause it's pretty high strength. It's not gonna just snap like a thread would. And then you loop this through like that. So it grabs it. And then you get it started like so. And then when you pull on this, it should pull the rest of the way through. There we go. That worked. All right. Okay, one done. So that is an effective way to do it. But now my frame here is going to smell very minty because this is minty floss. And it's also waxed floss. And I can't get it in the hole. There it goes. Okay. It looks like I took way too much. I don't need... Well, whatever. Okay. on there push that through there now you don't want to just go yanking on it because it looks like when it pulls through I'll do it slowly here on the other side here so you guys can see when you pull it it'll pull it in I'm slipping here now see like I pulled the whole thing through <laughs> so I gotta start over so I'll show you this up close. I got it hooked on there, you see? It's just like holding it, but you wanna get it started. So I'm gonna shove one end in there. So it's like started. See how it's now like half in, half out. And now using the string, I'll just pull it slowly. And you see it kind of pops in. You don't wanna keep pulling because you'll end up pulling the whole thing through. And then you just take your floss off. Cool. All right, two more. I mean, I will say it would, it would be nice if these were already installed, this coming from the person who buys budget frames, that things should already be pre-installed. But I'll, on the same token, also I understand because there's different, you, they don't know which bushing is best for your type of flight, I guess, whether it's soft or hard. So I guess in that respect, it makes sense to not have them pre-installed. But this is kind of a pain. That is definitely cool though. I'm happy with that. All right, those are installed. Now let's do the same thing with these guys on this part. Now this might be easier because it's bigger or it might be harder. I'm not sure which. Let's just see if I can manhandle it in there without the floss. I think I might be able to. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can get those in without the floss. But again, I'm using the squishiest of squishy. So I'm betting if you were using the other harder bushings, you may um, not be able to get it in as easy as I'm getting it in. There we go. All right. So let's just see what this is going to look like now. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, that is a pretty nice looking little frame. Kind of impressed with that. I mean, it feels very robust. All right. Now I guess let's put our standoffs in. Now, when I put this together for real, I'll probably be snugging these up a lot tighter. I might even put a little bit of uh, some blue Loctite on here just to um, make sure they don't wiggle themselves out because screws and standoffs have a habit of doing that, wiggling themselves out. But I will say this frame goes together really easily but I mean obviously it's because that bottom plate's just a single piece but I'm pretty happy with the way this thing looks I just hope it performs as well or when we build it out if it's easy to build into but it looks like there's gonna be tons of space because we're gonna have the room to do like three separate stacks There we go. That is done and built out. All right, so while we're at it here, let's get a little weight on that to see what it looks like. Bring my scale in here. So we're at 50 grams with no flight controller hardware or anything, just the standoffs and the screws that hold them in, grommets and all that fun jazz. If you put the sling on, 55. And if you put the little Uma grip pad, we're at 60. Which is not bad for a little frame. It's the only concern I'm thinking is that carbon fiber does not like the edges to be attacked that makes any sense and in a crash I don't know some of these edges I might have to do like I'm sure by this point that they all exist but some like little TPU things to cover these front leading edges just because I can see getting into a crash that might start causing it to delaminate and start fraying but other than that I mean it's a I mean it feels I mean pretty darn rigid as far as a little frame goes. I mean, for a comparison, I happen to have a uh, XJB frame sitting here, just the bottom panel of it. So here's the bottom of it, and you can see if we like line them up here, it's a little bit bigger than the XJB as far as the um, motor span goes, a little bit wider stance more of a true x probably while the xjb is a little bit more of a stretched x you can see the difference here um obviously there's a lot more carbon involved in here so it's probably much more um rigid because these arms if an arm breaks you're just going to have an arm broken and that's that this at least you have a little double so it's a little extra precautionary 
All right. Overall, though, I think this is a really cool frame. So let's let let let's uh let me give you my final thoughts on this guy and what we're gonna do with this. All right, guys. This this freaking acro brat is I'm pretty impressed. I have to say. I mean, I feel like it is pretty well worth the money. You can see that a lot of design went into it. Um, it's interesting the way it's sort of built that there's no real hard attachment from the plate that has the motor vibration to the plate that's going to be mounting your camera. Essentially, the camera cage is soft mounted to the frame and it's also soft mounting the stack that would have your gyro. And if you maybe did a little soft mounting on your motors, you know, you could probably try to really get rid of a lot of jello and a lot of noise that would be making it to your flight controller. So that that's a pretty, pretty genius design. I ain't gonna lie. It's very strong. Like, I mean, it feels very like rigid, like it's not bendy and flexy. I, I mean, like I said, I thought this bottom plate was at least like a four millimeter thick plate and it's only three, but it, it, it's got a feel of like a four almost, if that makes sense any sense at all it doesn't really but hey whatever so that's a pretty close that's basically the close look at the uh, acro brat frame and we will be putting this together and building this out into something in the very very near future so stay tuned for that that's why you hit that bell icon so you'd know when i post that new video all right so as always my name is tronage fly strong